Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, let me know if the mic volume's okay. We're going to be getting started pretty, pretty soon. Um, a lot to show here, so I can't wait to, uh, to jump in. Little sneak peek. Oh. Boom. That's enough. <laughs> a nice, quick sneak peek, anyway. <laughs> awesome brooding Phobos. Thanks, Musa. Hey, how's it going, Ariman? Good to see you, man. Sorry, we didn't have uh, many streams back on the channel this week. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a busy two weeks, let's say the least. Yeah, I'm also confused, Muso. It's also a little weird. Maybe when the uh, the actual um, update goes up, well, I guess it already went up, um, people are going to show up on time. But yeah, it's true. I mean, our last two streams got more views, um, at least at this time. Of course, we still have five minutes to go. So let's, uh, let's keep our uh, fingers crossed. Hmm, Echo. That is weird. Let's see... Um, one sec, let me try something. Shouldn't be echoing too much. Uh, we have everything paused. Let me make sure that I've closed these tabs. Hold on. And, uh, tell me if you guys still hear an echo or not. If anybody hears an echo, let me know. No echo on Kalania. Um, Muso, check, make sure your stream's not playing, because I do that all the time, where I leave the uh, stream window on, maybe on two different browsers, something like that. Good, good, good. Okay, awesome. So no echo. Excellent. We've got a lot of choices today also on the stream, um, but I'll talk about them more when we officially begin, because I think uh, Muso's going to have his work cut out for him in terms of straw pulls. There's a lot here. This is uh, an interesting, to say the least, very interesting um, DLC. Oh, that's a little reminder for the stream, so uh, we still got two minutes, and I definitely want to wait for this one because we have a lot of voting to do. Um, hey, how's it going, Dave? How's it going, uh, Lancier? Lancier? Um, Brooding Phobos, of course, Pixel, Laird, all of the regulars. Philcus, how you doing? Uh, I don't understand your question, Philcus. Can you uh, try to repeat? Um, I have to make a video for French people. Oh yeah, this fine Monday. Ugh, I love you, Dave, but no, I don't. I don't know if any Monday that's fine. 
Although, kind of a cool fact today, guys, um, this is one year since I started working at Slytherin uh, officially today, so it's, uh, wow, time goes by fast. It feels like two months, um, although I will admit here, time here in Europe goes by a lot faster uh, than it does in the States. That's just personal preference, of course. Ah, Cable Nexus, how you doing, buddy? Piddles is here. Very cool. And Kalania. Thank you, Kalania. Yeah, that's a good one, Laird. Those are the best Mondays. I think that, yeah, those Mondays are incredible. Of course. Although, to be honest, working at a video game company um, can be pretty fun. I mean, of course, there's a, it can be time-consuming as well, but it can be very, very fun. So some days uh, don't feel like work at all. All right, guys, we are going to do the grand reveal and get started here. So, oh, hold on. Failed grand reveal. There we go. Uh, and Musa will be happy to know that I did definitely keep the new followers tab in the right place. Um, so here we go, guys. We're going to get started. And we've got more than a few choices to make. So 48, there we go. That's more like it. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you all. So um, we are, of course, going to be taking a look here, guys, at, in my opinion, just something that Field of Glory 2, despite being an awesome game, needed. And that is the Immortal Fire DLC. And I'll show you why. So first of all, we've got an Alexander the Great What If campaign. As many of you guys know, Alexander the Great um, conquered much of the known world of, of, of his time period, of course. Uh, but once he got deep into Persia, he actually suffered from a fever and died. Now, I've read a few books on the subject, some that say that he was murdered by his own generals. Uh, of course, his last words, I say them a lot on the stream. Um, when asked by his generals who would succeed him, he said the strongest. Yeah, Alexander, not the nicest guy in my eyes, because he could have easily just said, well, you, you can be the leader, and uh, we would have avoided hundreds of years of bloodshed um, between those factions, the Seleucids, the Ptolemaics. But then again, we wouldn't have these awesome games without that. Now, we've also got a few other ones here. We've got the Seven Hills of Rome. This campaign follows the struggles of the early Roman Republic against her neighbors, the Etruscans, Sabines, Gauls, Samnites, and Campanians. And this is 340 BC, so this is really, really the early, early Republic. You know, we're talking about Romulus and Remus, uh, the, the legends, you know, this is the beginning of Rome. Um, and Xenophon. Now, this one I think you guys will also find quite cool. This campaign follows the military career of Xenophon, the famous Athenian soldier and historian who recounted it in Anabasis, the history of 10,000 Greek mercenaries who set forth with Cyrus the Younger to fight his brother Artaxerxes II for the throne of the Persian Empire, then had to march all the way back through hostile territory after Cyrus was killed in battle near Babylon. And that was only the start of his adventures. He later went on to take part in a Thracian dynastic war to march with the Spartans against the Persians again in Asia Minor and to fight on the side of the Spartans against his native Athens. Ooh, interesting. Um, and, of course, Seleucus Nicator, who was one of Alexander's greatest generals, um, possibly one of his, uh, you know, uh, one of his heirs, one of these, not an heir apparent necessarily, but certainly an heir, a potential heir, um, to say the least. Let's take a look here at the chat. Kalania says everything she knew about Alexander the Great, she learned from Iron Maiden. <laughs> yep, that's that's pretty good. Thank you, Aramon. So, not really, Macedonian politics were incredibly cutthroat to the point of Scottish Highlanders. If anything, the generals really wouldn't give a crap and just form their own kingdoms anyway. That's a good point. That's a good point. I think, um, certainly, uh, Alexander was wise, and that would be something to consider. So, what we're going to do now, um, we, of course, have these multi-battle campaigns. I do want to add that several factions have been added. You've already seen a few here with, uh, of course, the Athenians. Uh, there's also the Spartans that have been added for... Uh, you guys to enjoy, um, but I'm going to let you guys decide what campaign you want to see. So, um, Musso, I need you to please create a poll here. Uh, we're going to have Alexander the Great, what if, okay, so just Alexander the Great, uh, we will do, oh, we've got Philip of Macedon, but we're going to ignore him for now. Uh, sorry, Philip, you're great. Um, that's the father of Alexander. So we've got Alexander the Great, okay, um, Seven Hills of Rome, so let's say Alexander the Great, Early Rome, and Xenophon. So this one will be the Athenian one. Alexander the Great, 
early Rome or Xenophon. And uh, let's make a straw poll of that and see what you guys decide, and we'll jump into the campaign. This is the first time that I've played um, a campaign uh, from this particular DLC, so I'm curious to see how I'm going to do. It should be pretty interesting. Um, I honestly don't know, Philcus, if his, uh, if his uh, cavalry is any good, because I haven't played yet, so um, I think so. I mean, I think Alexander was known more for his hoplite formations, but I could be wrong. Ooh, we've got three votes for Xenophon. Very cool. One vote for Alexander. We'll give you guys about two minutes to do this vote, because I think this is, a, this is an important one. All three of these campaigns are fascinating, um, as far as I'm concerned. All right, we're going to refresh here. Ooh, we've got a tie. Alexander the Great and Xenophon, one for early Rome. Early Rome is actually much more interesting than people give it credit for. I mean, you know, this is the formation of a bunch of hill tribes into an empire. Um, that's and, and a republic. I mean, that's, that's pretty advanced, I have to admit, for the time period. All right, we've got four for Alexander the Great. Um, ten total votes, three for early Rome, three for Xenophon. Uh, we're going to give it another minute here. Because this is a close one. I think this is the closest of all of the um, all of the polls we've ever done. Oh, Ale absolutely, Pixel. We're definitely going to be able to show both um, Alexander and somebody else. We definitely want to try to cover as much as possible. So let's take a look at the straw poll. And this is going to be the final one right here. Wow, 4-4, four, four, Alexander the Great and Xenophon. Oh my goodness, we need a tiebreaker. Come on, guys. We know where there's a lot of lurkers um, that... And we don't mind you guys. We, we'd love you to join the chat. But um, if one of the lurkers can make a vote here, that would help tremendously. Because um, we want to make sure to get a fair result here. So this is first past the poll. Whoever gets the next vote, it's Alexander the Great. Five for Alexander the Great, four for Xenophon, and three for early Rome. Here we go, my friends. What if Alexander the Great didn't die? Let's see. We're going to jump in and check it out. And this would be incredible. I mean, I have no idea how different the world would be today um, if Alexander had managed to continue. Um, is it possible that we would have uh, a much more Greek, uh, maybe like uh, Western Asia or something like that? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, Alexander actually was eventually started kind of getting some disrespect from his generals because he was becoming very Persian, uh, and they didn't like that. You know, they, they were Macedonians to the core. So we're definitely sticking on the Tribune level. Um, and I'm going to keep, keep to a static fight. Kep? What's Kep? What's a Kep? We need an emoticon for that. All right. Having already conquered the Phoenician city of Tyre during your conquest of the Persian Empire, you now plan to conquer Tyre's great western colony, Carthage. Wow, and her empire. But first, you must secure your route by taking Kyrene and the other Greek colonies on the Libyan coast. Well, we're going to offer battle, and we are, of course, the mighty, mighty Macedonians. For those of you that missed our first Field of Glory stream, we played as the Macedonians and absolutely crushed the enemy um, in a campaign as Macedon, um, and actually won that campaign. So... These guys are good, and we know it. Um, we just need to know how to use them properly. Obviously, a lot of phalanx formations. We need to be a little more defensive than usual. Look at this army. Oh, my goodness. This is cool. Okay, first things first. Let's get a few elephants. You can never go wrong with a couple of elephants, right, guys? I'd like to think so. Uh, I like to put one over by the cavalry and one over here sort of with our infantry units. Um, some veteran armored cavalry would be great, but I actually want to get a veteran pike phalanx. I'm going to put that right up in front, and let's get another veteran pike phalanx, or just a pike phalanx. In fact, these pike phalanx are pretty good, um, you know, 72 to, to actually buy them. They're certainly expensive. I mean, we'll get a closer look here at the armor they're wearing. It's I'm guessing a lot of that expense is not just from the training, but from the excellent, excellent armor. Uh, what else to get? Hmm. We've got citizen hoplites, which is hilarious. Um, not going to trust them for a single second. I will get some Cretan archers. So we want to make up a few. We want to have some missile units up in front. And we probably want to have some cavalry units. Um, Alexander certainly used cavalry. And somebody mentioned earlier, um, the French gentleman, that um, there's actually some pretty good cavalry units here. 
or there might be. So we're going to get some veteran armored cavalry and some Zhistoforoi. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put the veteran armored cavalry here, or a few of them anyway. And these two others, well, let's put another one here. We're going to make a strong attack on the right side. And maybe one over here in the woods. I like that. Let's take a look here. Maybe some more armored cavalry in the woods. If I can at least surprise them, that will make me very happy. Let's take a look here at the chat, see how everybody's liking the setup so far. Yeah, and it's also possible, Ariman, that uh, somebody could make Cyrus's campaign eventually. Hey, how you doing, Yogic Fire? Vote Alexandra, says Vilkas. Yes, absolutely, Vilkas. So we're going to grab that veteran armored cavalry. Très bien. Hey, how's it going, Wolf? Good to see you. Don't know the game? Well, you're about to find out a lot. So this is actually a DLC for the current game. Um, let's grab another armored cavalry there. I think he's make a very good point. Our French friend here. Um, to try and sort of even out both sides of our cavalry. But now we've got to focus on 196 to spend, and I think I want to spend it. Look at this, Indian archers, and they actually look at that. They look Indian. That's a really cool addition here. Um, I'm going to use them for sort of my main force. This is weird. I can't put them on the front lines like my other archers. I hope that's not a bad sign. Let's grab another one. Put them here. We could get some mercenary hoplites. They're not awful, put it that way. Um, although light javelin horse are just so fun to use. Let's use some light horse archers. After all, we are in Persia. We should be learning from the Persians. So let's grab some horse archers here. And with our remaining 60, I'm not interested in the Thracians. Maybe we'll get one unit of mercenary hoplites. I think that's fair, more or less. Um, and we will accept. And I want to get a frontal view of this army because this is pretty, pretty cool. Um, just imagine how much this would this would cost and the fact that Alexander had to go so far uh, with a lot of the same men of course many died along the way um, you know is incredible just the fact that these guys would follow him that far that's I don't know if I could do that I'd probably get about one-fifth through the campaign and uh, sort of run away um, hopefully they're not very good at capturing um, runaways and uh, just start a farm or something honestly so we're going to accept that decent deployment mode, and we will end the turn. Confirm. Okay, so we're facing the Kyranians. These guys I haven't faced before. There's a lot of citizen hoplites, though, here, and I'm hoping that Alexander will be able to trample over these forces. Uh, the Kyranians shouldn't be too difficult, at least I hope not. Um, so let's go ahead and move our forces forward. We're going to, of course, move our missile forces forward first. I didn't like the way that worked very well, but maybe we can get actually get a shot with our light horse archers. Oh, yeah, we can. Fire on those light javelin men. 20. Nice. Um, Let's try to get another one over here. We're going to fire at the same one. 17. I'll take it. Now, I also don't want to give my position here in the woods away. Um, then again, got to do it eventually, right? So let's move up just a bit. There we go. That's not too bad. Move our cavalry up as well. And I'm going to move our cavalry up just a little bit more. I want to clear this annoying hill. If you guys look here, you know, this could cause problems for us later. I just want to fight over open ground if I can. There is some rough ground here. And if I can, I'm going to try to get past it so that once we actually make contact with the enemy, we're not fighting over rough ground. That's not going to be good for anybody. Okay, ending the turn, guys. Here we go. Ooh, some nice javelin throws here by the Karenians. We're going to have to make them pay for that. And they are moving their forces up. Although, once again, a lot of citizen hoplites. Looks like we've got some mercenary hoplites here. Uh, but for the most part, they are trying to use their citizenry to stop us. This would be a heck of a victory um, if the enemy actually managed to win. Okay, back to us, and I really want to make that unit run, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fire, 
37. Man, come on. This skirmisher unit can take a lot of damage. There we go. Finally disrupted. Uh, I'm going to move the Cretan archers here. No, let's try something else. Let's move them here. I didn't want to have to move them so close, but looks like all we can do is get a shot here on the um, citizen hoplites. Good enough. 17. And can we get another shot on them? 32 and we actually had one drop finally now of course you have to keep in mind that this game um, is is not necessarily to scale in terms of the amount of forces present we may very well have killed hundreds of men there so for instance if I click a unit here uh, let's click one of our units you can see here the strength and this represents how many forces are in there so for instance this light horse or archer unit has actually 302 men total um, so keep that in mind from here look how far these Cretan archers can fire Oh, that's fun. Um, let's see if we can't get forward with our Indian archers. Wow, do they really have to wait for the phalanx to move forward first? That's weird. Okay, fair enough. Come on, boys. For India. Move forward. Of course, India are, at this point are, is various, various different tribes. With some control by the Persians, of course. We're still moving forward here. And once again, I'm going to see if we can get really forward here. Maybe even go for a flank. That's something we haven't done in a long time. But I'm thinking with this force, it's a possibility. Alexander's force is very quick. Uh, which is why probably why he was able to cover so much ground uh, in the time he did. Despite, you know, being hoplites, having to carry a lot of gear, they definitely move quickly. So I'm not moving those cavalry. I'm going to leave them there. Uh, sort of make the enemy think I'm a little weaker than I really am and then put them into action make sure we didn't forget anybody else eh, just the cavalry alright end the turn here we go ooh they're getting close with their spearmen really close to their spearmen. See, if we could actually hit them here on this angle, we would do really well. Not sure if that's a uh, possibility, though. Oh, they've got chariots. Look at this, guys. Oh, we've got to get a closer look at those chariots. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. They almost look Roman, and not just for the red, but just the, the construction, the elegance. I mean, these are really well-constructed chariots, you can tell. Did not expect um, these guys to have heavy chariots. So we've got to do something about that, obviously. Uh, let's keep an eye on them. Keep on moving forward. We've also got to keep in mind, it's never a good idea to hit an, a top light unit with cavalry. However, if your cavalry is superior, sometimes you can, and you can get away with it. So I'm actually going to try to charge them with my elephants. 37, not bad. Let's grab this guy here. What if we charge downhill? It would be a good initial attack, but it wouldn't actually play out very well. So I'm keeping the guys here for now. Cavalry's going to have to stay pretty static. Um, now, we could actually attack this unit, believe it or not. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've mentioned this before. Um, if you have a unit, especially if it's a missile unit that's fragmented... It's the best time to attack. It really is. I'm going to go ahead and try to hit this guy too. There we go. He's fragmented. He should break pretty easily on contact. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep on firing. 57. Nice. Keep moving that phalanx up. We don't want to move it up too much. We just want to keep everything nice and tidy. And eventually, we'll go for a massive attack. I think at this point, we can reveal our cavalry. We've also got um, Arcadio, son of Xenocrates. Our Indian archers, unfortunately, not really doing much, but that could change. Uh, so I'm going to do the same here, move up. Move up with the elephant as well. Move up with this guy, and even move up with Alexander himself. That's right, this is Alexander. 
Um, he's a bit away from his cavalry, but I'm not too concerned. Just going to hold my position and hope for the best. How does this look like to you, though, guys? And, of course, if you want, you can absolutely bet on this fight. I don't know if Musso wants to start a bet. Um, go ahead and bet some slits because we will finish this one for sure. Uh, whether we win or lose, we're going to finish it. Ooh, look at that. Absolutely great. We can get a great shot from here. Love these Indian archers now. Look at that. The distance is incredible. So we just need to find sort of a little bit of open ground, and we can fire off 42 hoplites getting killed there or wounded. And we're going to end the turn right now, guys. Here we go. Ah, you want to fight some elephants. Now they are spearmen, so... Nope, they're still disrupted. <laughs> Good work, elephants. We are, however, um, not quite attacking uphill, but we're getting very close to that. We are still on the rough ground. This is what I was trying to avoid. Um, so we might have to fight this over rough ground. What can I say? Things happen. Oh, they're going for an attack on Arcadios. We cannot let that go unpunished. Here we go. We broke one of their units. Unfortunately, our cavalry are going to go straight into the melee. And they actually managed to disrupt our elephants. No, no, no. Unacceptable. We must immediately act. But I don't know what we can really do. Um, we could get a lucky shot on the enemy general. That's always fun. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is actually get this archer out of here so that the soldiers can get in and do the work. And actually, Alexander here, he's not going to be able to save the elephants either, unfortunately. We definitely want to get this archer back. And we've got ourselves into a bit of a difficult position. Let's put it that way. Okay, I'm going to get this guy over here. Seven. Let's go ahead and go for a hit with the elephant here. Eight percent only. Okay, so I'm taking Apollodoros, one of our other generals here, and I'm charging. Come on, boys. Phalanx formation. 130. They broke. Beautiful. And actually, I don't mind our elephant charging through. It's exactly what we want him to do. Is look, look at that. We just disrupted an enemy hoplite unit. Let's see if we can go ahead and charge in here with our Pike Phalanx against the Citizen Hoplites. Remember, we're well-trained. These guys have not fought hardly any battles. They did hold firm. I got to give them that, but trust me, they're not in a good position. Hmm. Now, here I'd like to engage in combat with the enemy. This is what I'm going for. Pretty even. Maybe we move in with our cavalry. 25. This is really a big risk, but we're going for it, guys. 62. They held firm. No. We can't have that. All right. In this case, we're going to turn uh, para monos. And I think I'm getting these Greek names right. Uh, when I was in uh, the U.S., I actually lived in a Greek neighborhood, Astoria. So I think I'm doing an okay job. Okay. Here we go. No, that's not going to work. Alexander, you stay back, buddy. We're just going to keep Alexander back here. We don't want him to have any trouble at all. But we still have a lot of troops here. Okay, let's see how this would work. Beautiful. Look at this guy's veteran pike phalanx. 130. Incredible. The enemy held firm. I thought we had them for sure. Uh, and we've got actually something in front of us that looks pretty tough. Mercenary hoplites. They can definitely be a pain. Oh, yeah. We're going to let them attack us. In fact, I see a possible route coming here. Um, now, with Arcadios, I'm going to attack the enemy here just because I want to avoid getting trampled by the rest of the enemy. That did not work the way I thought it would. What if we send this guy in? Now, of course, the Hoplites are going to be able to attack us from the side, but I think it's worth the chance. 25. Okay, actually, we can do okay here. Let's charge. Nice. 117. We've disrupted the enemy there. They've been pushed back. Unbelievable. Can we charge here? Yes, we can. 
and this is truly a pike battle i love these pike battles they look so pretty i'm sure in the actual um, pike phalanx it was terrifying it was anything but pretty but when in this game just the way it looks the way it's represented is great i mean when you see that line of pikes stretching out trying to stab each other it it really shows the the nastiness of a fight like this nope alexander you can't do much here my friend sorry now these guys could possibly do something might as well bring them a little closer to the battle and yeah look at that they can get a shot on the slingers yes how much do you like that slingers okay we're gonna end the turn here take a look at the chat Oh, my favorite combat mission game of all of them is, um, and I can't remember the name, but it's the one on the Eastern Front. I used to play it when I was a kid, um, actually, and uh, really used to love it so much. Okay, I think we end the turn here. Not much else to do. Ooh, interesting. We could actually get an attack. I don't know how on this unit. I don't know how that works because we're quite far from him. Interesting. Okay, we'll try it out. And we will end the turn. And unfortunately, our elephant broke. Definitely the worst unit we could lose. Except for Alexander himself, of course. Got some enemy units dispersing. They're going for a flank attack right on the general. I kind of expected that. But I was hoping we could beat this unit first before it occurred. Welcome aboard. Thank you for joining. Oh, he held firm, but he's going to break next turn. Come on, guys. The enemy held firm, but as you can see, if these units break, it's going to cause such an extreme disruption in the lines um, because there's so many units behind them. And, of course, if a unit breaks, the units around them have to do a morale check. So if we can break these guys this turn, uh, it's going to hurt. Unfortunately, we just had a general fall in. I hope it wasn't Alexander. It may have been. Uh, we'll have to find out. Now, Alexander um, will be essentially, um, how can I put this? Um, his wounds will be treated and he'll be here at the end of the match, no matter what happens. Let's see if the elephant can break through here. Come on, elephant. Wow. These citizen hoplites do not want to give up their fair city. Now, finally, one of them fell. They're fragmented. I think even a light javelin horse units might be able to outrun them. Nope. Not quite. What about an attack here? Oh, yeah. Veteran pike phalanx. 72 enemies fragmented let's break up this party here we go they've broken and look at that we've disrupted some enemy units of course we are starting to attack uphill here we have to be very very careful attack boys 37 let's see if we could break them here and once again another unit broken although this one can actually run away uh, most of the units in this case held firm i think they realize they could still escape if they have to and we might even attack with our citizen archers here in a charge. Uh, when the enemy is impacted like that, I'll do just about anything to get rid of it. Enemy broke. Now these Kyrenians are getting hit with a lot of damage. But unfortunately, not many of our units can move up. So we're going to have to have them move down. And considering that's the bottom of a hill and rough ground, I think that might actually work out in our favor. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. So I see an enemy general here, and Ichades, son of Cosmos, is the commander-in-chief. If we could kill this guy, we could end this battle pretty quickly. So Alexander's still alive. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is we don't really have many other options. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit them. Nice shot! And let's see if we can maybe fire with our archers. 47 and breaking this unit would be a huge boost they held firm my goodness how do they hold firm for so long they held firm again they held firm again wow they realize the importance of actually holding there i wish i could run away but i can't with paramonos he might go down pretty soon no i'm not going for the attack might as well just let it uh, resolve on its own We 
We could send in Alexander on a charge here. Ooh, I don't know if it's a good idea. We're going to do it. Let's go. He's Alexander. He's got to take risks occasionally. And, of course, ooh, I forgot about these guys. We've got actual cavalry here. So what I'm going to do with them is sort of just let the enemy know I'm here. Um, I see, actually, I didn't realize that. I see that there's um, a slinger unit. But I don't really want to chase it. So I think I'm going to try to chase these guys. I feel like we're back where we started. We <laughs> we kind of moved that guy around, but it really didn't make much of a difference. I will, however, take the light horse archer and move them over here. And I'm going to take these Indian archers and basically start getting as close as I can to that left side. Unfortunately, we can't shoot from here, but we will be able to eventually. Let's move up here a bit. Come on, boys. Give us a shot. Doesn't look like it's going to happen this turn. Take a look here quickly. Oh, don't worry. We'll see some Spartans for so for sure, uh, Toys and More. I promise you that. We won't leave this stream without some Spartans. In fact, just to be safe. There we go. All right, we're ending the turn, guys. We should either have major wins this time or major losses. Uh, that's not always the case. Usually, you know if it's going to be kind of, you know, give and take. But in this fight, it's it's a serious one. The enemy can flank attack us here. Uh, we've got a lot of units here that aren't able to move. But we've also got a lot of dead enemy units. So let's end the turn and hope for the best. Come on, boys. 35. Oh, this guy is in trouble. I feel like Paramonos is going to fall pretty soon. Run, Kyredians, before the might of Macedon. All right, flank attack. That's what I was worried about. That's why that, it was so important that we broke that unit. Flank attack on our elephant. My goodness. Very sneaky. And as you can see, I told you things were going to get interesting. And look at this. They've got more hoplites in the woods. I knew they were going to have to have something. And sure enough, Pedomonos was killed by the chariot there. Unless it was one of the enemy generals on the chariot. We'll have to see and uh, take a look really quick. And we finally broke the enemy unit there. Beautiful. Most of the enemy held firm. But that should change sooner rather than later. No, our general is still alive. So that was probably one of the enemy generals on the chariot there. Uh, and I could tell the general is still alive because we still got the emblem of the general there. So that was one of the enemy generals that was just killed. Beautiful. Let's also get an impact charge there on the enemy. And maybe we can fragment them this turn. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to fragment them with the mercenary hoplites. Sure enough, the enemy broke. And now we've got mercenary hoplites attacking chariots. That seems to work out pretty well most of the time. And, of course, Paramonos is still alive. Oh, come on, Paramonos. Fight your way out of this, man. You've got to save your own skin on this one. It's not looking so good over here on the right, is it, boys and girls? Well. There's other things we can do. So, for instance, uh, maybe getting a shot over on the enemy here why not we've got to try and harass the enemy as much as possible we'll get another shot here 47 that's more like it and Alexander here is actually having a little bit of trouble uh, to defeat this enemy move up here with our light horse archers and let's get a shot on the chariots and downhill with a chariot I mean that's got to be some Tremendous damage on anybody in the chariot. Almost acts like a sort of target, the back of the chariot specifically. Let's see what we can do. 57. Fire. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is charge right in here. Unless I can charge with this veteran pike phalanx unit. Oh, yeah. And try and hit the raw hoplites. These guys are even lower than citizen hoplites. They've basically just been drafted into the war. 
uh, in the spur of the moment. And right now, they're actually doing pretty well against our elephants. So let's smash this unit. 87. Disrupted. Beautiful. Let's go again. Come on, boys. Four Macedon. They held firm, but we pushed them back. That, of course, is the key. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and open fire on this unit. I think we can even get a shot with our Indian archers. Beautiful. They actually held firm, but look at that. One of them dropped face first. And let's see how we do on an attack. I think it's actually going to go pretty well. So here we go, 107. And they still held firm. I'll give it to these guys. Um, the Kyrenians have been probably the bravest faction so far because we are definitely winning. Uh, but they still manage to make our lives difficult see what we can do here it's not going to be very effective as you could also see guys the enemy flag is sort of tattered this is when a unit retreats but returns to battle or a unit uh, loses morale but sort of regains it as you can see these citizen hoplites are down from 1,210 men to 755 so they're definitely um, they haven't had the greatest uh, experience in the world to put it mildly uh, what I am going to try to do is get these men to turn around. No, let's stop that. Because what we'll do is do this instead. This way, if the enemy turns to face us, we can smash them with this enemy. In fact, we can smash this enemy right now. But since they're looking at us, they would actually get a um, pretty good attack, to be honest. I don't know, guys. It's looking really, really kind of half and half here. I mean, we started off really well, but I'm not sure if that's going to continue. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's confuse the enemy. Now they're going to have to turn one way or the other. And we'll end the turn, hoping for the best, as always. Come on, Alexander. Oh, they actually managed to attack our cavalry here. Come on, come on, elephants. They held firm, but the elephants are wavering. Oh, yeah, they managed to break that unit. So that's what happens sometimes, you know, even though your hoplites are doing great and moving into enemy territory, uh, they push a little bit too far, they get stuck behind enemy lines, and they're destroyed. Uh, so very unfortunate that that occurred, but it's one of the consequences of battle, my friends. Fragmented right there. Come on, boys, you can do this. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. And they actually force our cavalry unit to fall back. I'm glad they didn't break it. But their chariot is still holding strong. Now, why can't our elephant do the same? Come on. Oh, you were so close, elephant. Now, the elephant rallied. Just as I said that, the elephant rallied. That is cool. So, of course, he's going to have to attack this unit and try to break them. Breaks routing and we've got some disrupted enemy units of course we still have some enemies in front of us which is not helpful um and these guys of course stopped their combat because they just won basically uh let's see what we can do here no i don't want to form a square not yet anyway charge So I really like the checkerboard formation of the Romans, but what I've been discovering with my with my Let's Plays as, um, uh, you know, any sort of Hellenistic unit is you can sort of recreate that square with the Phalanx. Um, if you just keep on attacking the enemy unit um, as much as possible, basically, um, you know, you can eventually sort of be able to checkerboard quite a lot of enemy units here. 
So there we go. Enemy dispersed. Unfortunately, we got our cavalry in a very bad spot. Good job, Agrippa. And what I'm going to do is turn towards the enemy. I want to turn towards them. No! Bad. There we go. Now they have to make a decision. Who are they going to attack and who's going to flank them? Uh, at least I think that's the decision they're going to have to make eventually here. Uh, while that's going on, we could start moving forward with some hoplites. But first, let's fire off some rounds. Always good to soften the enemy up before a major attack. Same with these guys. And we could hit some running units, but... Ugh. Doesn't seem very honorable. Let's move this way. Now this is where we really need to destroy this chariot. Come on, men. Downhill against a chariot. You can do it. They held firm. It's unbelievable. We still haven't lost our general, but he is so close to going. And thankfully, he's not the commander-in-chief, but he's powerful enough uh, to determine quite a lot of things on the field. Okay. And believe it or not, we could get a pretty good flank charge on this guy. I know that's not the greatest idea, so I'll turn and shoot. Every shot counts, boys and girls. And that is true. That is the truth. Every shot really does count. Uh, this guy is not in the best shape, so I'm going to turn and try to break him. I don't think we can with just light javelin horse units, but every single attack counts in this game. In the turn. I like how they formed a square. It's Well, I don't like it. It's good tactics on their part. Run! That's right, Kyranians. Oh, come on, General. Hold firm. Okay, that General fell back without dying. That's kind of good. <laughs> but uh, they're doing a lot of damage to our elephants again. And like I, I, you know, I think I put just a little bit too much importance on the elephants. Um, they, they have their uses, but not always. You know, it also really depends on the battlefield. If it's a flat battlefield, they're incredible. Uh, against barbarian units, i.e. non-phalanx units, they're also very, very good. Um, because it's hard to stop them. But against another phalanx army, it's, it's tough to, how could I put this, to get the upper hand. There we go, disrupted, nice. Get him, get him. Finally, we fragmented the chariots. And our elephant is holding firm. Beautiful. So I'm first going to go with an uphill charge with Apollodorus, um, leading some pike, veteran pike phalanx. And, of course, he pushed them back. I mean, this is a professional soldier. We're going to do the same here. But first, I want to see if I can soften the enemy up. So let's get some shots on them. And now we'll charge in. 105, they held firm, but trust me, they're not going to be holding firm for long. 40, oh, I love seeing those guys go down. Charge. And, of course, the reserves. The veteran Pike Phalanx reserves, mind you. And they're disrupted, of course, with veteran Pike Phalanx and a Pike Phalanx attacking you. You're not in such a good spot. Let's put it that way. So, we've got Alexander here. And I trust him to break through. Come on, Alexander. 65, and we disrupted the unit. That is the power of a hero for sure. Start moving this guy over here. And actually, with uh, Baramonos, maybe we can break the chariot. Let's go for it. Yes, we broke the chariot. And we're chasing it, so Paramonos can stay pretty safe as long as he keeps this route going. Attacking that chariot would be a terrible idea. And actually, a flank charge here would work pretty well. So even the smallest unit can make a difference um, when you're flanking, honestly. Ooh, nice! And you know what? After all this, I think I am going to chase these slingers. 
Oh, they put up an okay fight. Must have been the woods. And the enemy can't make a decision, so I might have to make one for them. Or I might have to just focus on other troops. No, I'll make the decision for them. Oh, yeah, that didn't work out so well. At least we're where we we're, we're where we want to be without really being there. Charge. And again, these are definitely gambles I'm taking here. And let's fire at this unit if we can. It's out of shooting range. Impact would be pretty strong, but he's not totally broken. So I'm going to just turn and fire at these guys. Just seven. Come on, guys. That's more like it. 35 is a much more acceptable number. Let's take a look here at the chat. How are you guys liking the battle so far? Dave's usually saying, damn, should have bet all. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the AI playing as Alexander. Somebody mentioned that is going to be really cool. Uh, if Alexander the, dies, the battle is lost. No Strategus. So um, since this is a campaign battle, um, basically what will happen is the battle will continue um, for until the end and if we win then alexander is basically he's been wounded he's treated and he comes back the next battle so there's there's always uh, an answer all right ending the turn Elephant is still holding firm against all of those uh, unfortunate pikes. Oh yeah, he's in trouble. This is the unit that took out the chariot. And now a chariot is attacking our cavalry with some serious consequences. There we go, fragmenting the unit up on the hill. But a lot of the enemy holding firm. That's going to be a break. Beautiful. A lot of the enemy holding firm, but some fragmenting. Maybe enough for us to break them. Oh, no, don't disperse our cavalry. Our, our, our elephants, really. They are cavalry, but they just dispersed. And there we go. The enemy has lost heart. You are victorious. We win, guys. Enjoy your winnings, number one. We can claim this as a glorious victory. So, as you can see, um, 3,332 enemy killed, 4,152 wounded, 7,627 new slaves to teach, uh, of course, Macedonian children, um, or work very hard labor. Uh, we lost 382 men, 285 cavalry, total 672 killed, um, 1,370 wounded. Unfortunately, we did lose five elephants and two captured deserted. <laughs> I have no idea what the story of these two guys are, but I hope they go on to write some sort of uh, some sort of text. So yeah, the difference is 672 versus 3,522. I'd say that's pretty much 100% on our uh, in our favor. You successfully achieved the victory conditions for the previous stage of the campaign. Uh, the Macedonian's army lost uh, 2,057 men, 8%. Akradio, son of Xenocrates, was lightly wounded, but has returned to command. Great. So we actually got our general back. That doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes they die for good. The Koranian army lost 16,032 men. Zephyrus, son of Antiochus, was lightly wounded, but has returned to command. So the enemy general also came back to fight. Um, so having added Kyrene and her sister cities to the Hellenic League, your next target is Carthage. The question is whether to levy troops from Greek cities of Libya or to await a new draft of reinforcements from home. So guys, we need a straw poll. I um, hope Musos here... Um, number one, Kyrenians, we call in our allies, or we wait reinforcements from home. So reinforcements 
or Kyrenians. Let's see if we can get a straw poll going for that. Let's see. Yeah, I want to wait, personally. I think we're going to wait. Because I want to get Macedonian reinforcements, so I'm going to wait reinforcements. They're not likely to be as numerous, but they're going to be Macedonians. Uh, they've shown their valor before. Let's see if they can show it again. Okay, this is a smaller, really much smaller battle. Um, and we've experienced this before. Actually, no, it's not a smaller battle. We just, uh, most of our armies are already here from the previous battle, so we just have to choose new units. Definitely got to get some more elephants. I still haven't learned my lesson. Um, let's put one over here. Put the cavalry here. And um, veteran armored cavalry, always helpful. I will say that the, um, is it the Alexandrian? Uh, I guess more of the Macedonian. The Macedonian cavalry has been really helpful to us. So I definitely believe in these guys. No, not citizen hoplites. All right, so we can actually get a few vet veteran pike phalanxes going. Beautiful. Um, where am I going to put these guys? Here we go. Uh, veteran armored cavalry. We have enough of those. We could get another armored cavalry unit, or a Zhistofoda unit, actually. These are very effective. So let's grab one of these. And I'm going to put him on the right side. And now let's get some Cretan archers. These guys were great to begin with. They can be great again. And the Indian archers, even though we're going to have to somehow push them forward, we're going to set them up as well. Uh, and just some regular archers. Why not? So once again, I still don't understand why the Indian archers can't be up front. Uh, but we'll accept it. And we can add one more general to a unit in our army. Click on the unit you want to add a general to. And click the add general icon. Um, no, no. I want to get a veteran pike phalanx. That, that one's led by Alexander. Let's add a general here. And that's Isokrati, son of Likurbosh. Very nice. Okay, and turn. Who are we facing? Oh, some more mercenary hoplites. Wow, this is a nice little battle here. And Italian foot units even. Wow, look at the size of the enemy army here, guys. They definitely outnumber us without a doubt. Uh, but can we win the day? Well, before we decide that, I'm going to go ahead and save the Alexandrian campaign. Because uh, plenty of you guys were asking to see the Spartans. And I don't want to run out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and put Alexander here. So we can come back to it. We're probably not going to be able to come back to this campaign as many of you would like, um, because this is a beta version. This is actually a, a tester's version um, of what is to come. So I'm not sure if the save will transfer over, but if it does, that would be pretty fun. Um, so let's go ahead and get out of here for now. We're going to head to the main menu. And we're just going to take a look here at the battles. Um, let's do a custom battle. Actually, let's take a look at the epic battles. I haven't seen the new epic battles. Spartacus, Immortal Fire. Let's take a look at Immortal Fire. Oh, wow. This is definitely different, guys. Look at this. We've got the Battle of Marathon. Greeks against Persians. I mean, this is pretty cool. Um, we definitely might try the Battle of Marathon here. Following the conquest of Lydia, the Persians went on to conquer the Babylonian Empire in Egypt, thus creating the largest empire the world had yet seen, stretching from India to the borders of Greece. 
Between 499 and 493 BC, the Ionian Greek cities of Asia Minor revolted against their Persian masters, receiving help from Athens and mainland Greece. Well, basically, we need to defeat the Persians. Pretty straightforward. Um, so we're going to go ahead. The Persians have landed in the Bay of Marathon, and we are, of course, going to try to stop them. We've got our Spartans here as well. Uh, so let's jump in and see what happens. Okay. Interesting. We got a lot of citizen hoplites here. Not the army I would I was looking for. Let's get some armored citizen hoplites. Wow, look at that. Okay, except uh, if we still have affordable units, we'll go ahead and grab an Armored Citizen Hoplite Shallow. Very, very strange looking battle, to say the least. Um, I guess I'll start it off. So, first things first. We do have a few Armored Citizen Hoplites, so not all is lost, but the Persians look determined. No, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Wow. Okay, let's just take a look here at these Persians. Um, a lot of scuppy about a foot. So a lot of these foot soldiers, they're not a they're not only able uh, to fire bows, they're also able to fight on foot, thus the name, pretty well. Uh, so let's see if, we, if we're forgetting anything. I don't think we are. We'll end the turn. Ah, they're moving forward. They're not afraid. Oh, man. Lots of actual fire here. My goodness. Look at that. So with their ability not just to defend the area, but also to fire, they can be shooting at us at the same time and then engage us in melee combat. That's a huge advantage. Look at that. They're just picking our guys off little by little. And every guy counts. So that's over 100 men easily uh, that have been wounded or killed. Well, we're fighting the shade. Who said it? Who said it? Let's see who gets it first. Okay, it's our turn. Let's see what we can do. Not much, I presume. Take that. And this. And we'll start moving forward with the armored citizen hoplites. All we can do is try to break, is try to close ranks. Um, whether they're better or worse than us, we can't just stay back here and keep getting shot by arrows. So we're moving forward. And as you can see, a lot of these uh, Citizen Hoplite units look pretty, pretty cool. We're going to get a close-up shot here um, to show you guys the kind of sort of armor they're wearing. Um, they've got that classical Greek uh, helmet. And definitely a, a group of many different men. I'm sure that the modders are going to have so much fun with this new DLC. Uh, because obviously you could maybe represent each and every Greek city-state. As, you know, it wasn't just Athens fighting or Sparta fighting. It was generally a mix of many uh, fighting either against each other or together against the Persians. Or sometimes for the Persians against other Greek states. So um, there's that divide and conquer. The Persians were pretty good at that. But look at how many men we have. And I'll take a look here at the chat in a second. Um, see if you guys are liking this one so far. This is, of course, a big battle, but... I don't know how entertaining it's going to be, so let me know in the comments down below what you think. Okay, Armored Citizen Hoplites. And, of course, Kalimakos, the Commander-in-Chief. We're getting really, really close. We'll get a bird's eye view of this because this is going to look epic on a battlefield why hello
18 down. All right, let's take a look here. Looking good, six dogs Dogs of war. How you doing, dogs of war? Good to see you here, man. Okay, we're back to the fight. Let's end the turn. First, I promised you that, guys, that bird's eye view, and I want to take a look at it, because look at this. Have you ever seen a prettier approach to a battle? These two forces are about to clash, and I don't know who's going to win. This ground is not rough. This is pretty flat, open ground. So I guess uh, the better man wins. Let's end the turn. Yep, they're still using those bows. And they might succeed in breaking some of our units. They've disrupted one. I mean, it's a very effective technique. You know, have men that are trained not just in the art of... Uh, archery but also in the art of uh, spears or swords it's a real advantage to your army Okay, it's our turn. We're going to keep targeting this guy first of all. Disrupted. Now we could break off and, well, probably just chase this guy endlessly. And actually, we managed to charge here on the Persians. 1311. Let's see what it actually looks like. So, the good news is, um, the, I'll give you the bad news first. The bad news is, in terms of a charge, it's a total gamble. In terms of an actual protracted fight after the charge, we definitely have the advantage. So, I'm going to take the risk. 14. Now, a lot of our men could be forced back, but we must take this risk. We're engaging them and hoping for the best. There we go. We've already disrupted one of them. And on this one, we might actually win with a charge as well. Maybe. Fragmented. Look at that. Ah, oh, these Persians. They're seeing some Greek strength. United Greek strength, of course. Uh-oh. Well, right there, we finally got pushed back. And a brave Greek warrior did, uh, unfortunately, meet his fate. Once again, pushed back. Well, general against general. Let's go for Kalimakos, the commander-in-chief. Hope that he can break the enemy here. If not, we are in serious trouble. There we go. Get it. Get stuck in, boys. Get stuck in, as they say. So again, very even right now. That would not be in our favor, so I'm not going to attack that unit, but I'll attack this guy. And actual, actually, our chance of a victory here is still pretty low no matter what. Um, the best thing we can kind of hope for is a draw. In fact, it's looking less and less likely that we should be hitting this side of the army. So maybe we'll just hit one side, but there's so many units. <laughs> I'm amazed. Now you are disrupted, charge. Again, at least we're closing the enemy in on both sides. I'm hoping that's going to help. Come on, boys. In the areas where I think we can win, I will move forward. In the areas I think we are not in a position to win, I'll probably just keep our forces back. Uh, and that might backfire on us, because you want to try to keep a phalanx together. So if I'm not going to attack, what I might do is just move our forces up one tile and just wait for the enemy to attack us. Judge. Judge. 
Go for it, Militardis. Everybody should know Militardis by now. And sure enough, managing to push the enemy general back. That is disgraceful for Artaphanes. He's just a sub-general, but still, nobody wants to um, have something like that happen during a battle. And let's go ahead and assist our friends here. Might not be able to break the enemy just yet, but give us time. And unfortunately, we're the ones that got fragmented in that battle. And actually, I'm not even going to move forward. I'm just going to keep these guys here. The problem is we've got a general here, um, Demosticles. He's our sub-general. So he's pretty important. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to help these guys. Demosticles has to come out on top. Let's just hope that the Persians aren't going to turn around and charge us. So just to stop that, I will move my men forward. The reason I'm doing this is so that the enemy can't flank attack our general. I don't think he can, but he might still be able to. And we'll move this unit up as well. Guys, this is a huge fight. Huge, huge, huge fight. It's really going to come down to the very last second. End the turn. All right, so they charge our weaker unit. Totally makes sense. Uh, they disrupted some of our units, the ones that were standing their ground, with basically just um, archer fire. And actually, we had some of our um, some of our missile units run away. Come on, boys. Combat phase approaches. Nice. Pushing the enemy back here. Fragmenting the enemy on the right even more. And breaking an enemy unit. Hey, guys. We're doing okay on the right. Another unit broke due to a morale check. Another unit broke due to a morale check. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. And look at this, we've disrupted uh, the enemy sub-general Othanis. It looks like on the ground, our hoplites definitely have an advantage. This is Ottoland Persians. Unfortunately, they pushed us back here. That's okay. There we go, we've disrupted once again another enemy unit. The battle's starting to look a lot better here. Star General against theirs, 15-12. Pretty even fight. And here we should have done better, but the enemy managed to push us back. Come on, boys, hold your ground. We just need you to hold our ground, hold your ground while we roll up on the right side. Nice, disrupted. The power of the mighty, mighty Greeks shall crush this Persian horde. Oh, I thought we had him. Oh, they auto-broke. They just lost way too many men. It looks like there's only 119 men out of 247 there. Let's see if we can break the enemy completely here. Not quite. And they've broken. Wow. <laughs> So, the enemy did hold firm, but it just goes to show you sort of how we're doing a lot better in this uh, close combat fight. We just have the superiority um, of training, um, of formation, really. Had we stayed there and waited for them, they could have just shot us down. So, it was very important for us in this battle especially to be as aggressive as possible. And I'm glad we were. Now let's take uh, the glorious Militadis and try to kill Artafenis. Come on, Militadis. He's fragmented. He's fragmented. This unit is going to crush us if it manages to get an attack in. So let's try to break this one first. Held firm despite taking a grievous, grievous hit. 
Fragmented. Oh, they're pushing back. And unfortunately, some of our guys are a little worse for wear. But incredibly, Kalimakos and all of our generals are, are doing great against the enemy generals. So I hope this affects the enemy, especially if we manage to break them, like with these fragmentations. You know, we could eventually really, really crush the enemy with these kind of altercations. I'm going to go ahead and fire. Fragmented. Can we break him? I think we can. Oh, not quite. I know there's no point in charging because all they're going to do is turn around and uh, run away, essentially. charge this unit I'm definitely not going to charge and we are going to end our turn guys these are shallow citizen hoplites I don't know if that's a testament to their personality or how many men they have but uh, yeah they're not going to be the strongest warriors on our field unfortunately Ah, uh, they finally broke. Luckily, these guys passed the morale check, and luckily we didn't have a lot of units around that unit to begin with. Oh, they're going for the charge. And this is what happens to the units that we kept in the center there trying to just hold the line they basically get crushed by enemy flank attacks and by enemy missile fire. Uh, so that's not a very good um, strategy on our part, to say the least. Come on, get the general! Yes, we broke the enemy general. I don't I don't think we killed him, but we broke him. That's pretty important. Fortunately, we're having some disruptions along the lines too. The Persians are getting that battle courage, and you can see they're disrupting quite a few of our units. Fragmenting some. Broke another enemy general. Once again, did not kill him, but broke him. And in the same time, we also disrupted an enemy unit. And did we break the third? We broke the third enemy general. So now we've broken their commander-in-chief. I don't know how they managed to stick together, but they're going to fragment a lot faster now. 38 fragmented. That's what I like to see. Back to us, boys and girls. Let's break these stragglers. Boom, they're gone. Get lost. Now, the enemy held firm here, but they're going to be very weakened. And once again, disrupted the enemy. What did I tell you guys? They were going to be weakened, sure enough. Now, let's see if uh, our armored citizen hoplites here can finally get rid of these guys. Broken. Once again, the Persians are fleeing. And this unit is disrupted, which is going to give us just a much better attack. 12. And we can charge with Militavis. We're going to get a flank attack here, guys. This one should crush them completely. Uh, the mighty General Militavis. And the enemy unit broke, of course. You can't stand against a general like that and hope to survive. And with the flank attack, we're actually going to get a really good attack against the Scafabara foot unit. We might even be able to get a pretty good attack with these guys. Although there's not many units in these armored citizen uh, brigades, they might be able to make a change. The problem, the biggest problem, is over here. This is where we're going to lose some men for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. So we'll try to make the best of a bad situation.
turn towards the enemy. So now Kalimakos, and actually it's Kalimakos, sorry, that's our commander-in-chief, not Militadis, even though he's a great general. Um, he's going to have to turn back and try to get some flank attacks on the enemy. But look how quickly the enemy's fragmenting. So that's a sign of good times. Uh, another thing that's a sign of good times is we've got a bunch of hoplite units on the march. And I think we can also finish these guys off. Auto brakes, beautiful. That's what we want to see. Charge. Hold out till next turn, boys. Might as well get up close and personal with these guys, too. And they held firm. I'm amazed. I am amazed. Uh, we're playing on a pretty easy difficulty. Yeah, I think Musos are right. Um, since this is my first time sort of uh, playing around with this uh, particular DLC, I wanted to keep it pretty fair. Wow, we actually managed to disrupt the enemy over here. And this is our worst point. I think we're going to have to get the enemy to 60 because they're about to auto-break a bunch of our units, as you can see right there. They've even disrupted the Mostocles. Um, so this could be a turning point. We, we may have to get them to 60%. Oh, we've got some enemy units rallying. We can't have that. Good work, boys. Hold under any circumstances. Nice. Disrupted him with a flank attack. We should be able to break these guys. Sure enough, we broke that unit. Fragmented another. And I think we can break them next turn despite the fact we're surrounded. But they managed to break one of ours. Once again, this is why I think 60% is going to have to be... Look at that. Three breaks. They got an excellent morale um, morale boost against us. So, yeah, I think 60% is going to be the magical number. There we go. Beautiful disruption there. And another break on the enemy unit. 43%. Man, they do not let up, do they, these Persians? Well, let's keep up the fire. Now the enemy's disrupted. I'm going to keep moving forward with my phalanx. Again, I don't want to stop. You know, we have to remain aggressive consistently uh, to beat the enemy. Move this guy forward, too. That should be enough to deal with those guys. In the meantime, I'm going to start moving these guys closer and closer to the enemy units. And look at this, for instance. We had a unit totally turned away from the enemy. Had they been closer, we probably would definitely get a break. Now we may have to settle for... Nope, we got a break. And the enemy actually held firm. Let's hit him here. They're going to break eventually, if not just due to uh, a lack of numbers here. And I'm going to move this guy back because even if he runs, it's safer than the position he's in the, right now. Let's see if we could break this unit, the spot about a foot. That was a very lucky break considering we were basically surrounded. And we can actually charge in with Kalimakos, the commander-in-chief. Save your men. And actually, they managed to fight us back. Wow. 
a little con a little surprising to say the least. Flank charge. That was a definite impact hit, and they're gonna break. See, at this point, I can basically call it. Once I see them sort of pause for a second, it's like, yeah, we should run. This would be a good time to uh, to head back home. So as you can see now, the battle looks very different. Um, we're sending in all of these units to basically mop up the remaining Persians if we can. But the Persians have this central line that's very strong. Um, and I'm not sure what exactly we can do about that. Now we can try and knock out these archers, which, believe it or not, would make a huge difference. We have so little left to get them to that magical 60% number. End turn. Looks like one of their generals managed to actually rally, so there's still some hope here. But this is definitely one of the bloodiest battles we've had, and one of the most um, nail-biting, uh, because I just can't say who's going to win. Although with all of this Persian um, archery, who knows. Welcome to the channel. Thank you. Please do subscribe to our Twitch channel. Come on, boys. The enemy has lost heart. We are victorious. That's what I was looking for. Um, so we could wish to accept victory gracefully and let the enemy withdraw without further bloodshed. Or, of course, um, you know, you can go ahead and run the enemy down. I will say honor is satisfied. Uh, what's done is done. And it was a glorious victory. So, once again, the Persians, 1,186 killed. Total, um, a lot of wounded as well, and a lot of captured. We lost 697, so we also came out with a lot of wounded, um, but or wounded and killed. But we came out a little better off than the Persians. So that's the end of that. Let's take a look here at the uh, the actual factions list. See if you guys notice any new names. So we're gonna head back here to fight now no custom battle there we go so you can see all the Achaemenid Persians look at that just a ton of different uh, army lists there um, I believe the Antigonids are new they could have been there for a while though Macedonians, of course, have been around, but there are new iterations of the Macedonians. New iterations of the Romans as well. And the glorious Spartans. So this is what I think a lot of people were looking forward to. Uh, so we're going to take the Spartans, uh, 461 to 281 BCE. Uh, and we're also going to take the enemy army, who is going to be who else but the Persians. So we're going to take uh, the Achaemenid Persians. And we'll get to take a look at some Spartan units here. I know everybody loves the Spartans, so we've got to, uh, we've got to get a look in here. Okay, here we go. So we've already got some units set up, but... What would be a proper unit without some veteran hoplites? Uh, so let's grab some veteran hoplites here. The glorious Spartan army. I 
And we're really just going to set these guys up so you guys can basically get a look. Um, I will, of course, grab some armored cavalry. I'm going to make sure they're well hidden by the woods. Uh, some mercenary hoplites. First, let's get another veteran hoplite and some mercenary hoplites. So I'm really just trying to make the most majestic looking army. This is a much more for presentation's sake. And some light javelin horse, of course. Did not mean to make that rhyme, but it is what it is. Get some slingers. And some good old Cretan archers. We know these guys have served us very well. Obviously, with a Spartan army like this, you're probably going to want to have a fair amount of missile units. You definitely want to get some uh, horse units if you can afford them. And uh, top it all off with some mercenary hoplites. I'm also going to get some regular archers here, so I'm going deep with missile attacks. Uh, and I think this is a much more defensive army. Um, if the enemy attacks, we pepper them with arrows, we pull back, and we let our main men do the work. Now look at this. What else could we purchase? Citizen hoplites. Ew. Irregular foot, even worse. This is possibly the worst unit you can get. So let's fill it up with light javelin men. I mean, you know, they, they're actually very useful. Um, being able to pepper the enemy. We broke a few units in the last battle with our light javelin men. So I can trust these guys. I consider them pretty trustworthy. Moving forward, there we go. Good work, boys. And we will accept. Okay, so we can add two more generals. I'll add them to my veteran hoplites here. And to the veteran hoplites over here. Okay, the Persians, of course, as terrifying as ever. Although very Hellenistic in a lot of setup, uh, in a lot of ways they've set up. And when we look at the Spartans, uh, we can of course see the Spartans here looking pretty, pretty vicious. Now this might actually be, believe it or not, um, not the correct Spartan army I've chosen here because I've taken, I've seen some screenshots of some much more Spartan-looking warriors. Here we go. Uh, we've got some right here as an example. Uh, but there are definitely more Spartan-looking warriors, without a doubt. Uh, we may have taken the, I guess, the more modern version of the Spartan army. Um, but we definitely have those, sort of the helmets that you saw with the Athenians. The Spartans have those as well. Um, so we're starting off with a very base Spartan army here. But let's end the turn and get started. So I can just imagine the number of different fights I'm going to want to have with friends between different Greek city-states. I know there's always that... A consistent debate against who is better, Spartan or Athens. Uh, and now you can actually resolve that debate with your buddies. So keep that in mind. And I think what we'll do with, as we're getting close to the end of this stream, we'll pop out and we'll actually take a look at uh, some more of the campaigns. There were a few we did not look at and we definitely want to get a closer look. Um, just some excellent additions to the game. Take care, Arminius. Yeah, it's very possible we got something slightly wrong because the Spartans don't look the way they did when I was looking at them on uh, on the test screen. So I think, the, once again, this is a beta build, so that might be one of the issues. The Spartans absolutely, though, make a part of the Army Corps. Uh, so we'll jump into campaigns here. And Seven Hills of Rome, once again, this is one that I can... I really have to highly recommend. I mean, this allows you to play as Rome from its very early iterations. Uh, Philip of Macedon, I believe this is actually one of the mods I downloaded. I'm almost certain it is. Um, Seleucos Nicator. Uh, this is one of Alexander's greatest generals who, from governor to the satrapy of Babylon, went on to take control of nearly all Alexander's conquests except Egypt. 
He was on the verge of invading Europe to conquer Macedon and Greece when he was assassinated by Ptolemy's son, Ptolemy Cariunus. Remember that the Ptolemaics were another faction um, under uh, Alexander the Great, well, that broke off after Alexander's death. Um, his successors ruled the largest part of Alexander's empire, rivaled only by the Antigonids in, Mac in Macedon and the Ptolemies in Egypt. Once again, all of these are offshoots from Alexander's army. That's the terrifying thing about Alexander the Great, is even though he was able to conquer such a massive, massive quantity of land, eventually, on his death, that land had to be split up. Uh, remember, kids, always try to have an heir uh, uh, to your kingdom and or empire. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off just to see sort of the army. Um, so we're going to offer the battle here. And I just want to see what this army looks like. Okay, elephants. You guys know I love my elephants. Some Gistoforoi. So actually, this looks almost... I mean, there are some very um, Arabic and Persian units here. We've got Iranian armored cavalry, the Persians. Uh, we've got Arab uh, camel cavalry. So definitely a much more um, non-homogenous group of uh of macedonians basically in fact it's hard to even call them macedonians at this point uh you know this is a very specific group here uh let's get some veteran pike phalanx as you can see this army doesn't seem to focus as much on the pike phalanx um we do have a few pike phalanx units but not nearly as many as we did when we were playing as alexander so this army is much more focused on maybe a cavalry approach Obviously, we've got the good old Cretan archers. Uh, maybe not a totally cavalry approach. The phalanx is still important, but uh, cavalry definitely, definitely plays a role in this kind of army. I'll even take the heavy artillery, pop them back here. And, of course, some more Iranian armored cavalry. You can never get enough of these guys. Just excellent. When we look at those stats, superior armored, light spear swordsman, um, action point 16, you want these guys in your army if you can if you can afford them. And some Nomad Light Horse Archers. Always good to pepper the enemy with tremendous amounts of uh, Light Horse Fire. And we'll also take... No, we've taken all the Cretan Archers. Let's take some Eastern Archers. I don't know how they compare against the Cretans, but we've seen them perform with the Persians, so I can trust these guys. So we're fighting the Medians. This is another um, new faction. I don't know much about the Medians. <laughs> Almost nothing at all. Um, but I'm guessing it's another one of the factions that broke away from Alexander's Empire. Maybe one of the smaller ones. Um, I mean, just there were so many that broke away. We know mostly about the Ptolemaics, the Seleucids, the Antigonids. Uh, a whole bevy of them, really. But we don't know about every single one. I mean, there were a lot of sub-factions, etc. We got off to a really rough start, to be honest. But that's okay. I mean, we have so much time to reassemble this army the way we, we see fit. And so let's see the movement of the enemy here. I'm actually hoping they will try to attack us. Especially since if you look at the terrain here, this is like a hill going down inwards. It was sort of gully. Uh, if they can hit us here, they can massacre us. Um, but if they stay on top of that really big hill up there, they could also just wait for us to arrive and massacre us that way. Either way, this is a tough fight. I'm going to end the turn. Yeah, they definitely want us to try and fix our army up before we go forward. That's for sure. That's more like it. It's not perfect, but it'll do. And let's see, are we close enough? No. And, and this is cool. I, I, I'm not sure if this was in, um, this came before the DLC. Um, but before, you couldn't see how far you could fire. You could just eventually spot a unit that was in range. But now you can actually see the range 
uh, of your heavier artillery. This is very helpful and also helps to sort of uh, create, how can I put this, well, a new strategy, essentially. Uh, now you can maybe bring the enemy into an area where you know your artillery is going to be able to hit them, smash them up a bit, and uh, make things a lot easier for most of your men. Okay. All right, guys, let's go to the main menu again. We're going to take another look here um, just really quickly at the campaign, or I should say the, the battles, the epic battles available, uh, because there are so many great choices here with this new DLC. Uh, we're focusing on Immortal Fire, of course, and this is the 5th century BC, so this is the earliest we've gone um, into history, essentially. Who knows what um, the awesome Richard Bodley Scott will think of next. Maybe we'll go even earlier, or maybe a little more into the future. As you can see, though, though we have the Battle of Thimbra, uh, the Persians against the Lydians. Once again, I don't know who the Lydians are, a new faction. Um, we've also got Kunaxa, Cyrus's against the Artaxes. Once again, um, I know Cyrus the Great, you know, one of the great um, leaders of, of the Persians, but Artaxes, not sure about him. A lot of new factions here, guys, to play around with. And, of course, uh, Golgamela. This is one of the biggest battles between the Macedonians and the Persians. I might even do a separate video on this just because it's such an important battle. Uh, Isos and, of course, Gaidonea. Uh, we've actually played this before, but it was a mod and uh, a pretty fun one at that. Um, and Raphia, the Ptolemaics against the Seleucids. Possibly one of the most interesting fights um, the Arab Seleucids and the Egyptian slash Greek Ptolemaics. Probably one of the most interesting fights you could um, have. Of course, you can pick either side. You could play as the Seleucids. You could play as the Ptolemaics. So really, any side here, um, Persians, etc., it's totally up to you, um, whoever you want to try to win as. Of course, we've shown you the army list, and suffice it to say... This is going to really also um, bring some more flavor, not only to the modding community, but also to the multiplayer community of the game. Because you're going to have a lot more choices, um, and uh, some of these choices could be even more fair. Once again, um, I've given you guys the idea of trying to maybe create a, a sort of inner Greek rivalry. You know, try to face the city-states, the Greek city-states off against each other, and try to face the um, the Alexandrian factions off against each other. You're going to get some really, really cool battles if you do uh, if you do that. Thank you so much, Araman. So, uh, Medians were Iranians who largely managed to maintain their independence even in the face of the Seleucids. Wow. They like cavalry and archer just like almost every Iranian people of the time. Yeah, no, but it's very true. Yeah, absolutely. We could take a quick look here at the Persians. Absolutely. Um, so let's jump in here. We'll just go into battles. Custom battle. Got tons of Seleucids as well. Uh, somebody mentioned the Sele or uh, Ottoman mentioned the Seleucids. Tons of Seleucids. So we're gonna take the most the most early ver non not early the most recent version of the Achaemenid Persians um, to 329 BC. So we're getting closer and closer um, to uh, uh, the birth of Christ or Common Era, whichever you prefer. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just take potluck for our enemies because I want to just take a look here at the Persian army. Um, you know, many could argue, um, especially there's all sorts of disagreements in the historical community about, uh, you know, were the Greeks really fighting for freedom? Because, honestly, um, you know, democracy or no democracy, and really democracy was mainly in Athens, not in many other Greek city-states. Uh, but the Greeks, um, compared with the Persians, maybe were not as kind to their people. Um, the Persians... Um, had a lot more rights. They were pretty open in terms of of accepting other cultures into their society. Um, and it definitely looks like, and it makes sense, uh, the Persians are almost entirely cavalry-based. Look at this. We've got a few raw, irregular hoplites, but this is most certainly, uh, and maybe the first in the game, heavy cavalry army. I mean, with this with this army, you're, you're focusing on 
almost completely cavalry. Uh, very few units, and the ones that do exist are terrible. Irregular foot, these are no good. We do have some scythe chariots as well. Now, keep in mind with side chariots, you have to be careful. Uh, the horrible thing about them, they're great for breaking enemy units. But if you don't manage to break an enemy unit with your scythe chariot, you're in for a mess. Um, essentially speaking, you know, you're not going to be able to move and your unit will automatically break. So just not a good setup there. But as you can see, I'm trying to set up these Persians so they look nice and cool. Very horse-centric, as mentioned by uh, Ademan earlier. With some missile units thrown in, of course. Grab some light horse archers. And I think we'll just go ahead and accept for now because we just want to get a nice look at the Persian unit. Um, they just look awesome. I mean, period. The Persians, maybe, some could argue, the most advanced empire at the time. Look at the Iranian armored cavalry. It almost looks like they're in, in, embroidered and enshrouded in gold. And they may be. Um, they may be. The Persians had a lot of money to throw around. Look at these chariots. I mean, just beautiful. Uh, almost looks like something from an, from another universe. It's just a tremendous amount of color here goes into it, into each of the um, each of the uniforms, each of the costumes, and you could tell the difference between the Iranian armored cavalry um, and the Persians. And look at this. Look at the weapons they're holding. Looks like in one hand they have a sort of uh, spear, and in the other hand uh, a sort of hammer. So uh, that's an interesting combination of weapons. Um, a spear and a hammer. You know, you spear the enemy, then hammer him in the helmet, I'm guessing is the way that works. Overall, this looks like a ferocious force. Uh, nonetheless, guys, I want to thank everybody for showing up to the stream. And thanks, Ademan, for um, asking us to look at the Persians. They look awesome. Um, they look really, really cool. Um, I do want to thank everybody for showing up once again. Make sure to uh, check out our straw poll to decide who, well, what, what you want us to stream next week. Um, and... Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Musa will share our channels. You should absolutely subscribe to them, stop by, uh, share some love, and I hope you all have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, guys. Thanks for stopping by for Immortal Fire. I hope to see you on the ancient battlefield.